Hello guys, some of you guys commented and said that they want me to make a video about how to balance between the USMLE step on preparation and medical school. Hey guys, if you're new here, my name is Yasin Better. I'm an Egyptian American medical student studying medicine in Egypt and want to practice medicine in the United States. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to balance step one exam preparation and medical school curriculum. So let's get right into the video. What you need to understand is that the step one exam, the board exams in general, test your knowledge, your medical knowledge. So they ask you to apply the knowledge you already gained from your medical school curriculum and apply it to different and new clinical scenarios. So the best way I can possibly see in order to do well on the step one exam is do well in your medical school curriculum. Gain as much knowledge as possible in your medical school period. This video is going to be divided into two parts. Okay, The first part is for the freshman, the, the young medical student who just got into the medical school and heard about the USMLE and wanted to start preparation. The second part of the video is going to be about this old medical student, maybe fourth, fifth, sixth year, who is struggling to balance between medical school curriculum and step one preparation. So let's get started for the fresh man. Hello, welcome to medical school. First of all, I congratulate you on taking the step to do the USMLE step one exam. Secondly, you have a great opportunity to ace this exam and every board exam you're gonna face in the future. So you need to do two things in during your medical school, early in your medical school. First, you need to study. You need to study hard and gain medical knowledge as much as you can. Second of all, you need to apply this knowledge to different clinical scenarios. This is exactly what step one, step two, step three are going to test you. They're not gonna tell you, oh, what is the name of the artery? Or like, what is the origin of the specific muscle? No, they're going to ask you to apply your knowledge, your medical knowledge to new clinical scenarios. So whenever you find anything that's clinically relevant, by clinical, I mean things that appear on the patient that you can actually see. For example, telangiectasias, you can actually see it clinically. So study from your medical school and apply your knowledge by doing questions, questions, questions. So let's say you're taking cardiology now, right? And you're studying, you know, physiology, anatomy of the heart, anatomy of the blood vessels, physiology of the heart, physiology of the blood vessels, and the pathology, you know, myocardial infarction, these kind of stuff. You are studying from your medical school resources. Your question here, how do I study step one in the same time in medical school? So my answer here is basically to apply the knowledge you have about cardiology into clinical scenarios using question banks. So you're gonna, you're taking cardiology, get USMLE RX, it's a famous question bank, get AMBOSS, get U World Cardiology and start doing questions, okay? Start applying the knowledge you have on patients using question banks. I believe this is the best way to balance between step one exam and medical school curriculum. Do not give up on your medical school curriculum. Let's say you're in the same example, you're taking cardiology, don't go study biochemistry. Just do cardiology. You're doing cardiology now. Do cardiology and prepare for USMLE Step 1 exam cardiology in the same time. Studying and questions. This is how you should do it, okay? You need to understand this very, very well. If there is one thing I want you to take from this video is this. Do not give up on your medical school curriculum. I'm not saying study from your medical school resources. I'm gonna talk about this later in the video, but I'm, I'm, t I'm telling you, if you're taking cardiology, do not go study something else. Use the time that med school gives you to study the subject you have in med school, okay? So if you're taking cardiology, like I said, don't go study neurology. Don't go study something else. Do cardiology because preparing for cardiology will make two things easy. It will make your medical school exam grades high and will prepare you for the step one and step two exams. So you will hit two birds with one stone. This is very important, guys. Please, please, please. Now you finished cardiology, you have gastroenterology, for example, or neurology. Study neurology from your medical school curriculum and do neurology question banks or neurology questions. Some people tell me my medical school resources suck, which mine suck too, okay? The, we don't have really great resources. This is why in this video, I'm gonna give you the most famous subjects there is in med school and I'll give you resources, okay? So let's get started. You have biochemistry, 
anatomy, physiology, pathology, immunology, pharmacology, and microbiology. These are the most important, I know. First of all, biochemistry, Kaplan biochemistry, okay? If you want, if you want a resource, let's say you're taking biochemistry in med school now, and you want another resource beside, or you know, just instead of your medical school normal books and, and lectures, get Kaplan biochemistry, okay? It's, it's very good. Physiology. There is a book called Costanzo Physiology. This is an amazing book. Just, just get it. For the sake of God, get this book. This is the best book I've ever read in physiology. It's very, very easy to read. Very, very easy to understand. I never understood electrolyte imbalance or acid-base balance or any of these subjects ever, except from this book. So, Costanzo Physiology is the best physiology textbook you, you're ever going to read. Pathology, I said in the last video, pathoma. This is the best one here. Anatomy, you can use your textbook, your medical school textbook, or you can use Gray's Anatomy, along with Atlas, an Atlas, or, you know, a digital Atlas. Uh, the one I know, the one I use, the one I always use is Complete Anatomy 2022, the one I, I'm using right now. So get this, it's very, very easy to understand anatomy when you see the 3D pictures or the 3D models along with reading the book. Do not just read the book and memorize pictures, that's stupid, okay? You need the 3D model in order to imagine and, and memorize things by imagining. This is how you study anatomy, by the way, okay? Pharmacology, Kaplan Pharmacology is the best. Immunology, immunology, please, please, Kaplan Immunology. Kaplan Immunology and Microbiology, both of them in the same time. Kaplan is, is perfect in these four subjects, biochemistry, immunology, microbiology, and pharmacology. Y you can use Kaplan for these four subjects, okay? Still talking about the freshman who is still having a lot of time during med school and has a lot of time to prepare for the step exams and for med school and to become a doctor in general. So this is the best case scenario. You heard about the USMLE early in your medical school education. But what about if you are in fourth or fifth or sixth year? What about if you are an old medical student, what, you, what you're supposed to do to balance between med school and step exam preparation. So the way you do it is basically do not give up on your medical school curriculum. I'm saying it once again. If you're taking ob let's say you're taking neurology, do not leave neurology and go study biochemistry, my man. This is a waste of time. Do not leave what you're doing in med school. You have uh, two months to get cardiology in your pocket. Three weeks, you have three weeks to get cardiology in your pocket. Study cardiology in the same time your med school is giving you. Study cardiology in the time that your med school is giving you. Use this time for cardiology. Study cardiology and then add questions to it. So for the old folks out there, fourth, fifth, sixth year medical school, what you need to do is get your knowledge going and get your questions along the way, okay? Add a few, maybe, 20, 30, 40 questions, as much as you can, as much as you possibly can, add questions to your schedule, to your daily schedule, in order to understand and apply the knowledge well. By the time you, you finish maybe one year of education in your med school, you're gonna find that you finished probably a question bank, a full question bank. This is a big achievement, and actually you can pass step one, I can tell you guys, you can pass step one with one question bank, if you're doing it well. So to recap, don't make the mistake I did. Do not give up on the subjects you're doing. Don't say, oh, med school, they're taking neurology. I'm, I'm doing the step one exam. I'm gonna study biochemistry. This is stupid, guys, I'm telling you. The reason I'm saying that is you will have the, the study leave, the, the time before your exam. Let's say your medical school is giving you cardiology now. You'll have a cardiology exam and you'll have five days and you will realize because you, you were studying biochemistry all the time, you know nothing about cardiology and you have a medical school cardiology exam coming up. You become stressed out, you will leave the step one exam. You will not get the positive reinforcement this is very important. You will not get the positive reinforcement that people get when they do well on medical school exams. Actually, this is a very important part. I become happy when I solve well on medical school exams. So don't just give that up, all right? It's, it's a good feeling to get to do well on exams. Don't just give up medical school for, for the step. This is not how things work. Both of them work in the same time. And finally, guys, I'm going to do a study with me stream, live stream. So if you want to join me, study together. I'm also going to do some questions live also. I hope you guys join me when I, when I go live. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and study hard. Don't give up. Do your work. You're going to be amazing.
Bye, guys.